Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing a real simple demonstration on how to download and run Keycloak as a Docker container. Um, it's going to be really simple. It's not going to be connecting to any external database for persistent storage, um, but that will be a separate video that I will do. And I will show in another video afterwards to actually um, how to connect your application to it so you can use Keycloak as an authentication service for your projects. And just as an FYI about what uh, Keycloak is, you can go to the GitHub page, which you can see over here. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a uh, brief explanation of what it is. And then you can actually go to the Keycloak's own website, right over here. And you can see some more information about it here as well. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and actually download Keycloak from Docker Hub. So what we're going to do now is just do the command here that you're seeing on screen. I am up, oh, forgot the pool. So we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna be pulling version 15.0.0 from Docker Hub of Keycloak. So let's just let Docker do its thing and pull the image down. Okay, perfect. It is downloaded, so you can just kind of quickly verify that by just doing sudo docker images. And you'll see that this image here is now run on, or I should say, is now downloaded on your yeah. machine. So how to run this is you're going to do this simple command here: sudo docker run. And what you're going to do here, actually, is very important: is uh, you're going you're going to run with this p flag, which is the port where we're going to map the host machine's 8080 to the container Docker container 8080. And what this is is that uh, Keycloak itself is configured to be, uh, I should say, access the web console through port 8080. But since it's being run as a Docker container, you have to expose the Docker container's port 8080 to your host machine. And I just decided to map it to the host machine's port 8080. Um, so let me go ahead and just kind of replace that image ID with the Keycloak version. So very important again, this port flag for port mapping is needed. Without this, you will not be able to access the Keycloak web console after it's started up. So now we're just gonna observe the logs here and you're just gonna see it just uh, start up. So let's just wait for that. Okay, perfect, it started up. Uh, before actually going to the web console, there's a couple of things I just wanted to point out. So if you'll notice here at the very at the very top where the logs start, you'll see that it's actually using the embedded H2 database. Again, this is the default database that comes with the Keycloak instance. Um, not good to use this for production. You do want to use this, uh, I should say, you do want to use a, an external database to point to, but just for purposes of learning how to actually start this up, this is just fine. So now if we scroll all the way down, you'll see another reference to it. So um, you can see here that there is a reference to this database URL, which is again, the local H2 instance that comes with Keycloak. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I, will I will show how to resolve that in a another video, but for the purposes of this video, it's okay. So if we go to uh, the local host, port 8080, the host machine, which is mapped to the Docker containers, port 8080 for the Keycloak. You'll see now that we should access the Keycloak web console, but uh, we're not able to actually get to the login page where we can actually log into it. And you'll see here that these two, basically this one warning here, you need local access to create the initial admin user and, or basically use this add user script, um, that we're going to do, we're going to do right now. So, if you go to this you know Docker Hub page for Keycloak, you'll see here at the very top it does mention how to actually use this or add this in two ways. We're going to go ahead and use the way that's listed here, which is essentially just um, running this Docker exec command and then invoking the you know add user Keycloak script and then specifying the username and password. So let's go ahead and copy this. And let me just go ahead and add a, another tab. Uh, 
And let me just do this to see the container ID. And let me paste this command. And what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to start it off with sudo. We're going to replace this container placeholder with the actual Keycloak container ID, which in this case is this right over here. And then for the username, we're just going to create a user called admin. And for the password, we're just going to create a password. It's going to be bad right now. Matter of fact, I'll just call it a bad password. So obviously pick something that's more secure. Um, but this is for this demonstration, this is fine. So let me go ahead and execute this. You see here that it was able to add the admin user to Keycloak and now it's saying to restart the server to actually load the user. So essentially what we're going to do is just do sudo docker restart and we're going to put the container ID again. Oh, let me copy the container ID just in case here. And we're going to see here that it's going to be restarted and if we go back and look at the logs while it's being restarted, we're gonna see the same things that we saw before. And let's just wait a minute for it to get to the final state or the final log message. And then we'll go back to the web browser. Okay, now the logs indicate that it started up. So let's go back to the Keycloak web browser and refresh. Notice now that that warning went away and we are able to click on this link over here. And look at this guys, we are actually able to get to the login page. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and enter in the admin username and the bad, or I should say the password, which in this case is just literally bad password and let's don't save that and you can see now we are actually successfully logged into our Keycloak web console so that'll do it for this demonstration again something really simple but I just wanted to kind of start off in little steps because taking on a new authentication service can be a bit challenging at first and so I just want to do it this way but the next video, I'm going to show you actually how to use this with a, an external database because once again, um, this is being run used on the local H2 instance, or should say database that comes with the Keycloak container. But again, if you're running this in production and the Keycloak instance um, or the server that it's running on goes down and you have to bring this up somewhere else, guess what? You lost all the data. So it is very important that you actually connect this to an external database endpoint whether that's just on another server that you have or using a cloud services such as Microsoft Azure or AWS RDS. Um, but I will show you an example of that afterwards and the appropriate updates to the start command for the Keycloak to have it connect to um, that external endpoint. So that's it, guys. Hopefully this was informational for you guys. Um, if you found this useful, please uh, give me a like and subscribe. This will definitely help me out and I can be able to produce more content as this to help anybody with uh, just anything that they'd like to learn. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. and see you next time.